Today, it's a day of amplified awareness. And I want to thank my colleague, Rabbi Devorah Marcus, for sharing with me the background of her Rosh Hashanah sermon. Hers was a very different story than mine. She is of a younger generation, but her story was personal, based on Torah, and delivered with integrity and courage. She inspired me to share more of myself, and this is how we learn from our elders, from those younger, from our peers, and those whose footsteps and voices are no longer on this earth. And so on this holy day, I share with you some of my story that I've never spoken about in public and which I have only rarely spoken about in private. Tzama nafshi l'Elohim el chai, libi uvisari yiranenu el chai. My soul thirsts for the living God, the creator of life. I have long known and sung these words from the traditional Arab Shabbat liturgy since childhood. I wear those same words on a beautiful amulet made in the mystical city of Sfat over my heart. The melody of the song is simple. Its words, like this day, reveals the intensity of my thirst. My soul is parched. I sing that song because it brings the divinity of those I've lost so close that I feel them beside me. We are each here, each of us with parched souls, to remember. We are here to say Kaddish, to give thanks for those whose lives we are achingly missing. Author Leon Wieseltier wrote in his book Kaddish, the difference between the living and the dead is the difference between being remembered and forgotten. To be alive but forgotten or neglected or denied, is that not a kind of death? And to be dead but remembered or studied or missed, is that not kind of a life? Today we need to talk about choosing life as it was said in our morning Torah portion, choose life so that you may live. We are choosing life and being aware of, appreciating and celebrating life, even as we are all here grieving together. Experiencing, appreciating and celebrating life and grieving loss, sometimes in unexpected ways. I would challenge anyone in this room to say that they have more children than I have. Well, perhaps not Helene Schlafnan, not Ima. My children are extraordinary children. They grew up and are still growing in this congregation. What you may not know is that I grieve every day for the children God never granted me the opportunity to have. This is not about pro-choice nor pro-life in the ways we have come to understand them. I always envisioned having children. This was a profound personal loss and a death-like event. I acknowledged this loss the day I walked into the mikvah for a special ritual to acknowledge a life transition after years of possibility and hope, realizing that I would never be able to have children. There are many of us still who are grieving that kind of loss. To this day, my Yisker prayers include not only parents, grandparents, family, and friends, but they include Kaddish for a child not born. Since the year I came to San Diego, I have known about a book published in Hungarian, translated into English, and written by the author Imre Kertő, 2002 Nobel Prize winner. It is titled, Kaddish for a child not born. I purchased it the week I arrived in San Diego and it has been on my home bookshelf unopened until this week. I never wanted to know what the book was about, who would or could write such a book. I wanted to read it, but I was never ready. This note comes from the book's editors. Imre Kertsche, mesmerizing novel, is a tale of identity and memory. The story of a middle-aged man taking stock of his life 
in the ever-present shadow of the Holocaust. He explains to a friend that he cannot bring a child into a world where the Holocaust occurred and could occur again. In an intricate narrative, we learn the narrator's myriad disappointments, his unsuccessful literary career, his failed marriage, his ex-wife's new family and children, children that could have been his own. It's about loss. It is true that he chose not to have children, while for me, it was not a choice. Yet we both grieve for not having had them. Yet, I look out your faces, and I see the parents and the grandparents of my children, and I see the children themselves, whom you have lent to all of us, rabbis, cantor, teachers, we are all grateful that you bring your children here, and even after they graduate, they move on, they move away. We still and will always consider them our children. By my calculation, I have, we all have, hundreds of children whom we love and respect deeply, just as we love and respect the parents and grandparents who entrust them to our community. These children are a gift and a blessing, and being part of their lives, your lives, is a part of how I choose life. This morning we read, choose life so you may live. We are here at this moment because we are grieving, we are in mourning, we are remembering fondly or with rage the people closest to us, family, friends, and perhaps enemies. We are grieving loss. Our memorial book is filled with an overwhelming number of names. In these past 21 years, you and I have shared here at Beth Israel, we grieve together the loss of spouses, the loss of parents, the loss of siblings, and the unimaginable loss of children. We grieve for six million we grieve for the loss of life in our soil and we, in our schools and in Israel, wherever life is lost. There is so much to grieve about. We are sometimes unaware or afraid to acknowledge. Losses that we are silently grieving, losses that are different, but perhaps equally painful and impact our lives profoundly. And for each death and each death-like experience, there is a message from Torah, choose life so that you may live. Find the best way you know how to survive the loss. We cannot make judgments on each other's losses. We don't know how deeply each of us are impacted by the many, many kinds of losses we experience. In fact, it is only required of us to support each other a fundamental mitzvah. This summer, I had the exceptional privilege of traveling to visit a long time and beloved teacher. I should warn you that one should not go to the southwest coast of Florida in July, <laughs> unless the situation demands it. I knew my teacher was facing many health challenges, but was unaware that she was now a double amputee and performs a type of dialysis every night for nine hours for the privilege and continuity of her life. Every day, she chooses life. She makes a difference in the world. The personal losses for her are profound, and yet choosing life in the face of extraordinary personal loss is why she is alive to make a difference for herself, for the lives of her husband, her family, and her students. As it is with many of you who have lost loved ones this year, it is my first Yom Kippur without my mother sitting here in the congregation. As Weaseltier noted, she still has a kind of life. She is remembered and studied by Jewish educators for her 50 years of teaching. She's remembered and beloved by her family and three generations of students. That is how the dead go on living. We choose life 
for them in our memories and with our actions each and every day that we choose life for ourselves. And so, whatever losses you are grieving, may you be comforted in that knowledge and may your remembrances soothe your parched souls. Gumar Khatimatova.